So in my last video, we took a look at the Ryzen 4500 in the perspective of putting it inside of a budget-ish build. And that's a roughly $600 gaming PC that's gonna give you really good performance uh, for gaming and really just general tasks as well. But one of the big complaints for that video, and probably rightfully so, is, hey, where's the benchmarks? Now, Gamers Nexus did do a fantastic job benchmarking the Ryzen 4500, but I also wanted to put it through some of my own tests, basically just to see for myself whether or not this gave a good gaming experience. Now, this is not compared to other CPUs, and primarily because I'm really not concerned with comparing the Ryzen 4500 to what other Ryzen CPUs can do, especially the 5000 series. What I am concerned about in this video is figuring out whether or not you can get a good gaming performance from this CPU here in late 2022. So with that framing in mind, let's head off and check out some of those benchmarks to see just how well the 4500 can game in 2022. So to get us started, we are going to get going with CSGO. Now, a couple of things to point out as I sort of walk you through these. First off, down in the bottom left, you see the record info. And I didn't put it in the comments here, but all of these games are run at 1080p. So CSGO high settings, 1080p. I understand that most people will not be running CSGO on high settings. Most people will be dropping those settings down to get even higher frame rates. I get that. But understand, when you're getting an average of 223, a 1% low of 130.5, and a 0.2% low of 102, yeah, you're hitting the point of diminished returns. And frankly, I like my eye candy more than I like low settings. Now, moving over to some of the sensor data, it is worth pointing out the CPU at max hit 34% utilization. So at least in theory, then we should have a little bit more headroom with uh, the CPU. However, that is probably being limited a little bit by the game's actual ability to deal with lots of cores and lots of threads. Keep in mind, CSGO is not a new game, so there's probably some inefficiency there with how CSGO handles uh, CPUs with lots of cores and lots of threads compared to CPUs that may just have really strong single core performance. This is the frame time chart. Now, anytime you see one of these spikes, that's an error Area where maybe the game wasn't performing quite so amazing and if we flip it over to the FPS chart what you'll notice is at the low end where we're seeing some of those spikes uh, individually we will see the frame rate dropping down well south of 150 all that being said in the bottom right here we have this nice pie chart the vast vast majority of the time the game ran perfectly smoothly and anecdotally speaking I will tell you that I was perfectly happy playing this game with Horizon 4500 so in my world at least the CSGO check goes to the Horizon 4500 um, no real major problems to report there. Moving over to Doom 2016, it's much the same. Again, uh, this is a Vulkan title and I was using the Vulkan API there. Medium settings, once again, 1080p. You do see a few spikes here in the frame time chart. So uh, that does result in a tiny amount of stutter being reported by CapFrame X at 0.1%, but the average was very strong, the 1% low was very strong, and the 0.2% low was very strong. And taking a look at the FPS chart here, uh, we did dip clear down to 190 FPS there, and we bottomed out down here at a little bit north of 175, uh, at least by the chart. Now, obviously, the chart's not hitting the uh, lowest end there. This is sort of smoothing things out. But for the most part, the game, once again, was perfectly smooth. I'm not going to sort of discount one small stutter there, but keep in mind, if something's going on in the background of a PC when it's running a game, that could cause a small hitch in the frame rate. So for the most part, I would say, once again, the Ryzen 4500, perfectly fine. I wouldn't have known I'm running an $80 CPU based on playing uh, Doom 2016 with this particular configuration. So once again, the Ryzen 4500 is perfectly fine for this particular type of title. And then finally, moving on to Cyberpunk. Punk 2077. This is moving towards a GPU intensive title, a uh, AAA title that's going to really push a GPU. Uh, the Ryzen 4500 was perfectly fine for this title as well. You see an average frame rate there of 98, a 1% low of 72.7, and a 0.2% low of 60.5. Over here on the bottom right, the stuttering chart, uh, virtually no stutter. And obviously, when you're just glancing at the frame times chart, you do see 
one spot where the uh, the frame rate apparently did drop there. But otherwise, this was once again a perfectly acceptable experience, especially if you're trying to put together a PC that is fairly affordable. If you're trying to keep the cost down, an $80 CPU giving this type of performance is going to keep most people perfectly happy. And keep in mind, with the 4500, you have a fantastic upgrade path as well. This is not necessarily a completely dead-end decision. If you go with a 4500, you have a significant upgrade path, even though the AM4 platform as a whole is now at an end yeah, you still have a lot of options if you decide to upgrade down the road. So all things considered, the Ryzen 4500 gets a check mark on all three of these titles, two of which were obviously more fast-paced titles. One of them was a AAA single-player title, and I had no issues really to report with any of the three. So if I was pairing a Ryzen 4500 with an RX 6600, I would be pretty happy with that combination. So at the end of the day... Yes, the Ryzen 4500 is a solid gaming chip, especially considering the price tag of roughly $80. If you can get it for that $80 price point, then you've done very well on the CPU front, at least from a value perspective in helping put together a low cost PC that's gonna give you a really good solid gaming performance with an excellent upgrade path. So with that in our rearview mirror, if you do like this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.